Hey everybody, Jack Lispini here with a new tutorial. And today we're gonna make Centurions actually cool. Centurions are super spicy with the new Space Marine Codex. And I'm gonna show you how to convert your Centurions to look like this bad boy right here. Basically what we're going to do is change some proportions on the model through some very easy conversions so that they look really cool on the tabletop. I've already assembled the model into some basic sub-assemblies following the directions listed in the box. So you can see I have like the upper torso, the legs, and then I have things like the arms with the heavy bolters on there already assembled and cleaned up with most of the mold lines and all that kind of stuff so that we can get right into the conversions. So this is where to start if you want to do this yourself. And I also show off some of the extra pieces that we're going to be using to do some of these conversions. So if you want to do this at home, just get yourself your Centurions assembled up to this point. You're going to need very small amounts of green stuff. I make these little small green stuff balls to use as spacers and connectors throughout the process. And then as far as tools, you just need some clippers, a hobby knife, and a hobby saw. If you don't have a hobby saw, it's not really necessary but it does make things very very easy these are super cheap you can get them for like five bucks all right step number one we're going to take the torso and you see these two little circular things on the end we're just going to clip those right off just get them out of here right super easy and then there's that small little spacer and that is where we're going to start our first cut with our hobby saw and basically i am just going to saw off that spacer flush with the rest of the torso piece right there. Then I'm just going to use my clippers to get rid of any major excess and then sand it flat. You don't have to sand this, you can kind of use your hobby knife to scrape it like I'm doing right here, or you can use a sanding stick to sand it. But basically we want that whole section just flush with the rest of the torso piece like you see here. What this is going to do is narrow the shoulders a little bit so that it's not so broad. One of the things that looks a little bit weird is that the shoulders are way too broad on these models. Here's our torso piece. I've got both of those sections sanded flush and we're going to use one of our little green stuff balls as a spacer for the neck joint. You can see it goes right in that divot there. And then what I'm gonna do is just put a little drop of super glue in that divot, then put in the green stuff and then put another small drop of super glue on top so that the green stuff is bonded to both pieces of plastic with the torso and the helmet. And that way it's not gonna move around and it is hard joined while our green stuff cures because it does take about eight to 12 hours for it to fully cure up. Now, if you want to paint your helmets separately, what I suggest is just licking your finger and then touching the top of that green stuff and then pressing in your helmet so that you get a nice little divot there and then you can remove the helmet without the green stuff sticking to it so you can paint your helmets separately and then it glues right in place later on. All right, step three is gonna be putting on our shoulder pads. You can see I've glued our arms on flush to the body and used two more of our little green stuff balls as spacers. Again, little drop of super glue, put the green stuff on, second drop of super glue, and then we're going to lightly press our shoulder pads onto that area. And you can see that small little curved divot in the shoulder pad fits directly over where the hurricane bolters are. So we're bringing the shoulder pads up a little bit, but also in towards the neck a little bit. So it narrows them out and gives it a more aggressive look without being way too wide and derpy. Step four is going to be working on our legs. Some of the leg pieces in this kit are one piece and some of them you have to glue together. This one I had to glue together, I just waited for that plastic glue to dry. And basically all we're doing with this step is cutting off everything flush with the bottom of his boots. You can use a hobby saw if you want, but I use the clippers here, it works pretty easily. And then when I'm done, I lay a sanding stick flat on my desk so it's level, and then I gently rub the feet on that sanding stick so that the flat part of the fleet is nice and smooth and level. Step 
After I'm done sanding, I just take my hobby knife and clean off any little flash or pilled up plastic from the sanding step. Next, I'm going to grab these two pieces. I believe these are parts of their uh, close combat drill arms. And we're going to use these as extenders for the legs. And basically what you want to do is cut a flat line 90 degree angle to the center line of this piece just above that little hose. You can see where my line is with the hobby saw. And we're just going to cut those all the way through flat. And then again, I'm going to lay my sanding stick flat on my desk so it's level and sand the connecting area of that piece flat so that both pieces are flat and flush as possible when we glue them together. Again, you can use your hobby knife to clean up any flash or pilled up plastic from the sanding process. Now I'm just going to use some plastic glue to join those in place. You want to make sure that it, both sides are flush and flat and just position them a little bit. It can be kind of off center and it'll change the angle of the feet just a little bit, but we also have a step after this that's gonna fix that. So just make sure that it looks okay to your eye and it's not too wonky or anything like that. Um, it does look a little weird at this step, but trust me, it'll all work out once we glue on the leg armor and everything else. Next, we're gonna take our leg armor pieces and we're gonna cut them in two. This is like a single molded piece. And we're going to cut right along those indented panel lines that are part of the model itself. So to make it easier, I'm just going to snip a little bit with my clippers, making sure not to cut into the leg armor too much. And then very carefully and slowly, because I don't want to cut myself and I don't want you guys to cut yourself, take your time, be very gentle with this, and then just gently scrape and work your hobby knife down that panel line until you get it to a point where you can cut through or it'll cleanly snap off. And then use your hobby knife to clean up those jagged edges, maybe a sanding stick to sand it down nice and smooth. But pretty easy step if you take your time. Try not to muscle it too hard. You definitely don't want to slip your knife and cut yourself. This is kind of dangerous, so be very cognizant of that fact and be very careful. After that, we're going to alter our feet a little bit. You can see it has these kind of toes on either side. And I'm just gonna take my clippers and cut it flush with that first little section to shorten them up. So that way they're not too close together when we put our feet onto our leg models that have kind of been narrowed and extended. So that way your toes won't be too close together and it'll look fine on the tabletop. Again, you can sand those down flat to make it easier. Now we're going to assemble our feet. Again, I'm going to put a small drop of super glue in this little divot here. Use a small green stuff ball as a spacer and connector, then a second drop of super glue. And then I'm going to gently press our feet down into that super glue and green stuff so that the green stuff will compress a little bit and conform to the two pieces and hold it together nicely. And again, you want to make sure that you're not flexing on this stuff too much while it's curing. It does take about 8 to 12 hours to fully cure into a hardened plastic. Now I'm going to put our leg armor on. Thigh armor goes on the thigh just like normal, and then the shin armor goes on the shins, and you might have to kind of wiggle and figure out where it's gonna fit best. If you want an easier fit, you can clip some of those little bits of plastic underneath the shin armor or sand it down a little bit so that you have a little bit bigger points of contact. But basically, you just wanna figure out the best fit there so that you have a little gap at the knee and a little gap at the ankle so that way we can see how much taller this guy is going to be standing. So 
I think overall in terms of height, we've extended the Centurion's height by about five to six millimeters, which is actually pretty big in terms of 28 millimeter scale models. So if a basic old style Space Marine is 28 millimeters tall or about 28 millimeters to the eye line, extending it that much makes a huge difference. And after that, I just went with basic assembly steps. I put on the extra armor. Um, I altered these little pistons very slightly and glued those on just like the instructions. And you can see compared to a Primaris Space Marine, he's much taller. He's a little narrower at the hips and the shoulders and the legs. So the overall pose is much nicer. His head sticks out of that armor a little bit more, giving better proportions overall across the board. You can see the painted Imperial Fist guy there. The back looks a little bit weird, but just wait for the green stuff to cure fully. So like put this guy together, set him aside overnight, and then come back and you can gently slice off a lot of that excess green stuff with your sharp hobby knife and it'll look just fine. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. More to come with the Centurions and some cool Imperial Fist stuff in the next video. I'll catch you next time.